Go do the research on single mothers raising children in Colorado. And now we have an influx, influx excuse me, of people that are moving into Colorado from other states because this is a beautiful state. I can't think of anywhere, I can't think of anywhere else to live than Pueblo. I hear some of the people talk about Pueblo and I think, you are delusional. This is an incredible city. The hand of God is on this city. The favor of God is on this city. The hand of God is on this church. The favor of God is on this church. I'm just puzzled at your, your reticence to see what God is doing, the incredible things that God is doing, people's lives. But see, that's your mindset. And so, as I'm praying and I'm thinking through all of this stuff, you really, this message is time travel and Brother Elder's prayer on Saturday afternoon. Maybe that's what you ought to title this. Praying with Bishop on Saturday afternoon. Because the Bible tells us to pray about these things. I pray. I pray for single mothers. Believe it or not, sis, I'm on your side. I know how tough it is for a husband and a wife to raise children, let alone a single mom or a single dad to do it on their own. So this is not an indictment. This is a probing into your life to... To open your mind to values that are better than what you learned at college. Because <laughs> many of them are professional. They're college educated. And they went through a system that has tried. They went through a system that has carefully been cultivated for not construction but deconstruction. That is a very common word in the upper echelons of academia. It's deconstruction. That became very prevalent from people that have read Marxist works. In his Communist Manifesto and Marxism that rages against the system and teaches young people how they have to deconstruct a system that is faulty and is terrible. And, and so that's what, even though you don't see that today, because they're not going to come right out and say, today in class, we're going to teach you what Karl Marx taught us. Well, they're getting so brazen anymore, they may do that. At college level, they may do that. But they carefully craft, they carefully craft stories. Yeah. And they weave into these stories the moral, or shall I say, immoral values of Marxism and communism. And some of you kids, you don't know this, and I don't have time to teach this this morning, but I will come back. You, I will come back and hit it. That's the good thing about coming to church at Christian Growth Center, is you never get the full story. It's like Paul Harvey around here. You have to come back for the rest of the story. Some of you don't know who Paul Harvey was. Go look him up. He was a great journalist and so these the, these kids do not see the the undercurrent I can take it all the way back and I can show you in history that that was the intent of public schools up until the 1930s there were no public schools most of the schools were administered by churches and by private organizations that were extremely religious in fact, the, old, the oldest college in America is Harvard. Harvard did not start out being a state university. In fact, they're still not a state university. They are not accredited by any state redis, registered accreditation. They stand alone on their own endowments. I think one of the endowments they have is well over, a, uh, it's like $50 billion. Because they have created an institution of ideology. Their ideology began as 
Christian principles and foundations. That's where it started. Y'all bored with this? I'm sorry. This is all God gave me to preach today. And you're going with Bishop through his prayer time on Saturday afternoon. And I'm talking to young people that their mind is so open. I, that's why I love young people is they're willing to learn. It, 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 when you get, you young people pray for me. I have to pass her to us old crotchety people that think we know everything. Pray for me. I thought I'd get some amens from some of us old crotchety people. But see what I mean, young people? See, you are seeing exactly what I mean right now. <laughs> But youth, their mind is open and, 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 and so they will teach you that communism is a better way. Now, you're thinking automatically politically. I do not look at communism in a political manner. I've been to communist nations. I've been to Vietnam 13 times. I've been to China six times at least. In fact, we have people that are traveling home from Vietnam right now to give us great reports of the revival that God is pouring out in the nation of Vietnam. We need to pray that God to keep his hand on Brother Hicks and Sister Rayanna till they get home. I have had to experience the restriction of ideology. I know what it's like to be preaching and my translator tell me, you have to tone it down, Brother Elder. This preacher's been in prison 19 times for preaching the gospel. That's unheard of here in the United States of America. If you want to clap here, you can clap. If you want to shout here, you can shout. You, if you want to run the aisles here, you can run the aisles. But those people have to sit there and be quiet because if their neighbors hear them worshiping God, they will be turned in and they will lose their house and they will lose their family. They will break their family up, put them in prison, sell their house, raise it to the ground. We preached in a place three years ago, or uh, last year. We preached in a place last year that, that one of the men talked to me that he built three churches and the government came and tore his church down three times because he didn't have a license with the government. Aren't you glad you live in America where you can have church in a barn if you want to. You can have church in a living room if you want to. You can have church out on the street corner and lift your hands. We have the right by our Constitution to assemble. You shouldn't take advantage of that. Every time you have an opportunity to come to church, you ought to, you ought to revel in the fact that we have the freedom to praise God and to worship Him like not very many other nations in the world. And so I'm thinking about these young ladies now not all of them are like this you can't that, that, you can't profile everybody everybody's an individual but you have these girls that grow up in diverse environments and guys and so they are susceptible to these new ideas of community versus family now, brothers and sisters, I love the community. But the community never takes precedence over the family. Not even in the church. It is God, family, and then church. The church is not here to take the place of the family. Now, many times the church has to take the place of the family. Brother Abe, because when you were, what, nine years old, your family fell apart on you. I tried, Brother Abe. I tried my hardest. He knows. I was a young preacher when I came, and his family was falling apart. And all he knew as a young man was coming to church. I think you were born in the church. I think Brother Duke dedicated you. Now we're taking it out of the afro and we're putting it in the real world here, okay? We're talking about the mind of Christ. We're talking about values, if I can get that far today. But his family, his parents had seen so much failure 
in leadership. That by the time I got here, Brother Abe, there was no leader that was going to have influence in your dad's life and your mom's life. They had seen too much failure in supposedly spiritual leadership. Now, this is not a knock against previous leaders. I wouldn't hear. My point is, they saw a preacher run off with a young lady in the church. The preacher before that, his wife was a mess. That, and I'm being nice when I say that. Some of you were here. You know exactly what I'm talking about. His wife would sit up and openly rebel against him. I know I preached revival here when I was 17 years old. And I, I watched her sister Carla sit on the front seat and do exactly what I knew her husband preached against. And I thought, whoa, I was single then. I thought to myself, I'm sure glad I'm not married to her. I never dreamed I'd pastor this city. At that time, I thought Pueblo was the armpit of America. And now I love it. This is the greatest place that God ever put on the face of the earth. We're talking about the mind of Christ. Stick with me. But by the time I got here, they saw that. And then the, the next man came in and he portrayed an attitude of love. Everybody love one another. Love, love, love. But he was so full of bitterness. But he never disclosed that. He's so full of bitterness that he's backslid today. Not even many of you know that. Because how many of you have been here for the 35 years that God has blessed me to pass this church? I hardly ever talk like this. Because I'm not interested in what happened in the past. I'm only interested in what God's doing in our future. And what he's doing right now. But I only do this to give you some background. So when this 26 year old kid comes. And I'm doing my best. Because brother Abe. I know. I know. You need to ask him something real quick. I'll hold on. Okay. Just make sure. This is really important. When a, when a daughter speaks to her daddy. I tried my best. I love you, girl. I tried my best, Brother Abe. But I was a 26-year-old kid. And somebody was able to set the mindset of the older saints. They were able to convince the mindset. We're talking about trends that sweep through congregations. We're, we're talking about trends that if you're not careful, you will embrace them without thinking them through. I, if I had time, young lady, I, I would tell you before you embrace that liberal woke concept, can, can you get equal time with somebody that will talk you through that? Young, young lady, if, if, you have a, if you have a daughter, young lady, do you really want her to go to the bathroom where there are young men that are acting like they're girls? And they're coming in there and they're watching your daughter go to the bathroom and they are lusting after them even though they're acting like they're a young lady. They're, they are delusional. That is demonic. Young lady, I, I, I'm trying to talk to you. I'm trying to, is that the kind of values that you want your children to be involved in? care how popular that mentality is right now. It's popular in junior high school for kids to say they're gay. So, well, and, and you don't, before you jump on somebody's agenda, learn what's behind that agenda. Now, now let's stop right now. I, I want us to pray. I want us to ask God to let his mind 
control our thinking right now. Everybody, don't look at me. I can't, I can't do this. Only the Lord can do this. Can you talk to God? God, would you help us? I, I don't want an adversarial position with these young men and these young ladies. Somewhere or another, open their mind. Open their mind to the trends of the Holy Ghost. Young lady, do you really think you want to give your son the opportunity to be a a homosexual? Now, if you're living that kind of lifestyle today, we love you. But you're living in sin. There's no difference in you being a homosexual and somebody being an alcoholic. We all need God. But listen to me. Because some of you that have been involved in that kind of lifestyle, or if you're still in that, life kind of, that kind of lifestyle, you can actually help me keep these kids from going in that kind of lifestyle. Because you know that there is a tremendous amount of violence and pain that is part of the homosexual lifestyle. Now, I'm not going to get in it this morning. I told you I'm going to the edge, but I'm not going over the edge. And they portray to you that it's just normal. It's not. The majority of homosexuals are in and out of relationships because it is driven by their compulsions and their lust. It is not driven by real love and real commitment. Is that the way that you want to live for the rest of your life? Young lady, do you want to submit your son to that kind of lifestyle just because it's cool and your woke professor told you that you need to stay out of their life? No, you don't, sis. God did not make you their best friend. He made you their mom. Well, I don't want them to hate me. They don't hate you. I don't care how much they say they hate you. Secretly or in their heart, they need a mom and a dad that will bring stability and security and values. Human values, not demonic values. Human, godly values that anchors them. Oh, God, help me preach this. And I tried, Brother Abe. You don't know this, but I wept for you and your brothers. I felt helpless. I felt helpless. That ain't the first time. I'm thinking of a lady right now. God, wherever she is. I've even seen her husband on airplanes after they moved out of this city. Just perchance. Where's my beautiful bride? She's working. Just perchance. On an airplane, I heard him talking. I turned around. There he was. I walked up and hugged him and said, How you doing? Almost called his name. He never got saved. But he loved this church. Two of the most beautiful boys you ever seen. And I knew, I knew Satan was calling them away. There was a mindset that got in them. The wrong kind of thinking that began to breed in their mind. And I was praying, oh God, help me say the right thing. Help me. And one night in the old church, as that mama stood beside her youngest son, I saw a picture of him the other day. He's like twice as tall as I am. But that night I was praying for him in that altar. He was just a eight or nine year old boy, maybe. Maybe not even that old. And I'm telling you, the spirit of intercession got a hold of me. I don't know when I have felt that kind of intercession. I don't know what Satan has in plan. 
hands for that young man. But I'm telling you that night I interceded and I said, God, somewhere, somewhere, I knew, I knew, I knew they'd already made, they, here, here's that word, they had already made up their mind. And I was praying. I was praying against their made up mind. But you know what? If you don't have a spirit of repentance, not even God will change your mind. You got to be careful about making up your mind. Because God says, if you don't love the truth, I'll choose your delusion. And the delusion that he said is you'll believe a lie. You'll think that what you're believing is the right thing. I don't ever want that to happen to me. God, whatever you do, don't turn me over to myself. Whatever you do, God, don't turn me over to myself. Don't turn me over to my thought process. Let the mind of Christ, let this mind which was in Christ be in me, O oh God. Wrestle with me. Contend with me. Convict me. Draw me into a spirit of repentance, but don't turn me over to my mind and to myself. Brother Richard, if you would come, please. In just a few minutes, the other musicians, but I just want Brother Richard right now. And I prayed. I prayed because see there's this mindset of the Holy Spirit of God that happens it will happen to you even if you don't pray the Holy Ghost will speak to you even if you don't pray but if you're not praying and in submission to the Holy Ghost you'll miss it You will miss God speaking to you if you don't learn what Jesus learned. What did Jesus learn? It's in our text. Let this mind be in you. I'm telling you, if you don't hear any other message that Brother Elder preach, I'm preaching to mamas. I'm preaching to daddies. I'm preaching to young people. I'm preaching to children. I'm going to tell you something, young lady. Don't let your emotions rule you. Let the Holy Ghost and the Word of God reign in your mortal body. But I love Him. Will you love Him 10 years from now when He's beat the fire out of you and He's an alcoholic and a drug addict? And young man, I don't care how. She got more moves. She got more curves than a county road in Colorado in the mountains. Yeah. Those curves will go away, Bubba. But that mindset may have you ensnared for the rest of your life. That's why the Bible says, be not unequally yoked together a believer. I'm so sorry that preachers today have lost their courage. And that I, I apologize to you. But I'm telling you, there still are preachers that have not lost their courage. They're still good men. They're still good women. They're still good young people. They're still good ladies. They're still good... Let this mind be in you, which was in Christ. He knew who he was. He thought it not robbery to be equal with God. He knew the power that he had. He could have called 10,000 angels. He could have walked off of that cross. He could have taken vengeance on those 
that lied about him and slandered him and told horrible stories and called his mama horrible names because she submitted to the Holy Ghost. And said, be it unto me according to thy word. And the mindsets, and, and, and there's so many ways that I can go with this right now. Because mindsets can get set early in life, young man and young lady. And in, in early in life, you think, one of these days, I'll show them. I'll show them one of these days. I'll show everybody. I'll show my mom. I'll show my dad. Now I'm preaching. Now you got to go back to last, was it last Tuesday night or last Sunday when I preached on resentment. If you were not here for that message, you need to go listen to that message. Not because I preached it, but because it's from the Holy Ghost. Resentment can be a mindset. That's why there has to be influences in our life that will, that will challenge the wrong mindsets. I'm going to make that statement again. There has to be influences in our life that will challenge the wrong mindsets. I didn't say people. I said influences. You can have people in your life. But they don't have influence in your life. To challenge the wrong mindset. That's why parents. You need godly people in your life. That will not allow you. To create vendettas against other people in the church. Don't just get friends that will pet your vendetta. You have a right to feel that way. You, you, you poor little thing. No, you need people that really love you. Here's what the Bible says. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. But deceitful. I'm quoting from the Bible. Deceitful are the kisses of an enemy. That you, you don't need that. You need people in your life. Now, now think this through. Now, now hold on. That's your brother. That's your sister. Yeah, they did you wrong. Yeah, they need to repent over that. Yes, that's not right. But the other hand is we can't assume the same mindset that they have. We can't, we can't slander them just because they slandered us. You kill my dog, I'll kill your cat. Come on, brothers and sisters. Now we're down here where the rubber meets the road. We're not just coming to church and patty cake and playing church. Now we're becoming who Christ has called us to become. And to develop meaningful. These words that I'm using are carefully selected by the Holy Ghost. To develop meaningful and Valuable relationships takes work and effort and encouragement which you've never had in the world because every time you got mad you just short circuited and you just ran off instead of working through it so now you're a husband and your wife says something you disagree with and you clam up and don't talk to her for three days. And you run off. Oh man, it's getting so quiet. You can hear a rat licking ice right now. And we're kind of chuckling at it. But what do you say we put on the mind of Christ? And we do what Christ did. He humbled himself and became obedient 
to get to where, okay, God, if I'm going to be the husband that you call me to be, I've got to be to my wife what you are to the church. Because the Bible said, husbands, love your wife as Christ. Love the church and gave himself for it. Okay, we may need to pray again because, because it's, it's really getting late. I've almost went an hour. Some of you are losing it. I started at 11.52. He humbled himself and became obedient he made of himself no reputation but brother elder what will my friends think of me let me give you this is elder the first chapter in the 13th verse are you ready elder the third chapter in the 13th verse who gives a rip what everybody else thinks what does God think can I be who God called me to be? Do I have the courage to go through the process and say, okay, God, I'm willing. I'm willing. I will be that husband. I will be that father. I will be that wife. I will be that daughter. I will be that son. I will submit to authority in my life. I will teach my children how to submit to authority. We will stop the curse in Pueblo, Colorado of rebellion and disobedience. We will stop the curse of broken families. We will stop the curse of more alcoholism more alcoholism per capita than any other city in Colorado. We will stop the curse of more teenage pregnancy than any other city in Colorado. We will stop the curse of drug addiction in this city, God. We will do it because we will submit to the mind of Christ. Let's stand, everybody. So this is how the Holy Ghost works. There's more that I was praying about yesterday. But right in the middle of that, I was praying. I was praying for families. I, I'll talk some more. I'm going to tell you what I'm disturbed with. I'm disturbed that Pueblo has the highest rate of high school dropout of any other city in Colorado. That's why I'm so proud. Jaden, have you graduated yet, Amaya? And who's this, some of the other graduates around here? I'm so proud of them. Miss Carly Sue, 13 years. They're helping us break curses. Even better, some of them are coming out of the wicked school systems and coming into our school. And parents, for God's sake, don't let the devil talk you into taking your kids out of school. What on earth are you thinking? So, Brother Elder, they don't like Brother so-and-so and Sister so-and-so. Get a clue, Mama. Get a clue, Daddy. There's going to be people they don't like for the rest of their life. Are you going to teach your kids to just cop out every time they have a disagreement with an authority figure in their life? I'm not making excuses for wrong leadership. But remember, leadership is human too and we're working on our problems too. What we all need is Jesus Christ. What we all need is this altar. What we all need is good leadership to keep us together as the family of God. Why don't you get some courage, mom or dad, if something's going wrong in the school? Why don't you get the courage to stand up and walk in and say, I don't agree with this. Now let's hear the whole story. Remember, you're the boss. We're not. That's just pennies on the side here. But I'm praying. I'm walking in here. And I'm praying, okay, God, I want you to stop the high school dropout in Pueblo. I want the students coming out of Christian Growth Center to be so influential in this city. Yeah. 
I want them to talk to people with courteousness. I want the teenagers of this church to talk to people with respect and honor. Yes, sir. No, sir. I don't care about the filthy spirits and the unclean spirits that want to drive our kids to casualness. I want there to be a formal side of their life, and I want there to be a common side of their life. I want them to understand there's a time to dress up and look good. I refuse to give in to this sloppy, agape spirit that comes in. You're not going to see this preacher standing up here in a pair of blue jeans with holes all over in it and a t-shirt sitting on a bar stool. I'm not doing it. I'm not giving in to that sloppiness. Our kids are nobility. Our kids are, a, the Bible says children are a blessing of the Lord. And I'm praying about this. I'm praying about, okay, God, I want our kids to be influential. I'm praying your favor in their life. Praying their, your favor and your blessing in these kids' lives. Was yesterday your birthday, bub? Was it your birthday? Happy birthday, dude. How old are you? Nine? Are you married? Oh, okay. Whew, had me scared there for a minute. How many of you love our kids? Isn't it kind of sad? You say you love our kids, but you don't show up at youth service. But if it was their soccer game, you'd be showing up. If it was their soccer practice, you'd be giving money. If it was their, if it was their baseball team, they would be sold out of those sandwiches before you left here today. Hey, it got quiet all of a sudden. All right, young people, you owe me. I'm putting a good word in for you right now. Pete's one of the best thing you can get your kids involved in. 8,000 kids that are radically saved, talking in tongues, hitting the altar. Why in the world? Would you want to restrict your kid from that kind of environment? Just because you have a beef with somebody in the church. Well, listen. Why don't you bring that beef? And I will get my smoker out. And let's smoke that sucker. And we'll eat it together. And we'll be who Jesus Christ called us to be. I'm talking about getting the mind of Christ. And, and here's the last of it. This is how the mind of Christ works. But you gotta, you got to get in the habit of obeying the voice of God. This is how the mind of Christ works. I'm praying. And all of a sudden the Holy Ghost speaks to me. It says, pray for the leaders of this nation right now. Right now. I mean, right in the middle of all this stuff that I'm discoursing to you. This is how the mind of Christ works. Pray for your leaders right now. Okay, God, I pray. I pray. I want, I want to be cute right now, but I'm not going to be cute right now. I pray, oh God, for our president. I pray, oh God, that you help him. Bless him. Help him to walk off into retirement happy. Come November. In Jesus' name. Give us enough votes to help him do that, Jesus. But keep your hand on him. I'm serious. This is prayer with Bishop Saturday afternoon. Help his wife, God. Help his son. And I really did pray this. This is not mocking. God, deliver Hunter Biden from drug addiction. I prayed that. I don't want that on anybody. I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy, and I don't have any enemies. But I'm going to tell you something. I don't want anybody to be in the throes of addiction. I hate it. I hate it with a passion. That's why I won't compromise against it. That's why I'll keep preaching this way. How long will you preach? Till every one of you precious people have deliverance in your life. Till every one of you are walking in the mind of Christ. Till every one of us are becoming who God has called us to become. I pray. I pray against. I pray for... Mrs. Joe Biden, I know she thinks she's a doctor, but she's not. She does have a doctorate. 
But anyway, God, I thank you for help her. Bless her. I pray for the Speaker of the House. I pray for the leaders of this city. And the Holy Ghost said, pray for, pray for President Trump. I said, okay. And this is how I started praying in the Holy Ghost. Okay, God, protect him. Protect him. There are people that want to take his life. This is literally right in the middle of my prayer. This is how the Holy Ghost works, brothers and sisters. Protect him. Keep your hand on him, oh God. Keep your hand on Melania. What an incredible. Go read her post on Instagram today. An incredible post she posted today. I pray for Melania. I pray for their children. I pray for their grandchildren. God, I pray that the terror of the Lord would come upon anybody that would put their hand against authorities. Even the authorities that I don't agree with and I don't like their policies. They're still authorities. They're still authorities, brothers and sisters. You've got to get that in your head. They're still authorities. I, I, that doesn't give me a right to pray imprecatory prayers against them just because I don't like them. I'm praying. And all of a sudden, I just, oh, God, keep your hand on President Trump. Keep your hand on him. I plead your blood over him right now in the name of Jesus. God, you know there's not so people. And I walked out of this sanctuary, and I walked in there, and my son Jeffrey texted me and said, Dad, look at this video. And there they was. They were trying to shoot the, the, who I think will be the future president of the United States. And they missed him. Because right when the guy shot, he turned his head. I wonder who turned his head. I wonder. There was a hand that just did this. You say, you, boy, you really think a whole lot of your prayers. You're just really arrogant. Well, if I boast, let me be like the Apostle Paul. Let me boast in the Lord. I got it right one time, Brother Abe. There's been other times I disobeyed God. But one time in my life, I got it right. You really think God turned his head? Well, I can show you that the Bible says in the book of Daniel that the king's heart is like channels. And the Lord turneth it whithersoever he chooses. So if he can do that with Nebuchadnezzar's heart and Belshazzar's heart, he can do that with Donald Trump's head. Hey, Bubba, look over here for a minute. Now, I don't know what's going to happen. But I think that God allowed me to pray that just so that I can encourage you to let the mind of Christ reign in your life. I didn't have time to go to it today. We could have went to Second or 1 Corinthians and talk about but we speak wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom. That word wisdom is Sophia. Where is Miss Sophia? There she is. That mystical wisdom of God. But then it begins to talk about the knowledge of God which is Nos which was the God of the Romans. That's where we get Gnosticism. It talks about that our knowledge is not even close to comparing to the knowledge of God. And how that his wisdom and his knowledge directs us. I don't have time to read it to you, but you can go home and read 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and get to the very bottom of it. And it says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world. We have not received the spirit of the world. If you're involved in worldliness, then the worldly trends will set your mind for you. But if you have not received the wisdom of this world and the knowledge of this world, then it is the wisdom of God that sets trends in your life. That's why I don't have a bit of problem looking holy. I'm not ashamed when I go out looking holy. I'm not ashamed when I talk holy. I'm not ashamed when I dress holy. I'm not a dra- I'm not ashamed. We are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. I'm not ashamed when I talk holy because I'm not listening to the wisdom and the knowledge of this world. I'm tapped into another spirit. Can we lift our hands and worship him right now? Can we lift our hands and talk to him right now? Come on. Come on, young lady. Come on, young man. Come on. 
Come on. You're so concerned with what all the all of your friends at school think and 10 years from now you won't even know maybe one or two of those people that you went to school with why would you let them set the trend in your life young man why would you let them set the trend in your life young lady come on the Holy Ghost is here this morning If I had the time this morning, we'd have got in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and it talks about how the Holy Ghost plays such a major role in that wisdom in our life. I invite you, come on, come on, everybody, everybody. Come on, let's make let's set a trend in this church. Let's set a godly trend that when it's older call, we all come to the altar. Come on, come on, you're part of us. Come on, come on, let's let's lift our hands and let's let the Holy Ghost speak to us today. Let's let the Holy Ghost set the trends in our life. Let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Come on. Hallelujah. I surrender all to you. Everything I give to you withholding nothing come on withholding nothing I surrender all to you everything Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, young man, come on, young lady, come on, sir, come on, ma'am, come on, brother, come on, sister. I want the mind of Christ, God. I want the mind of Christ to you.
praise you. That's it. That's it. Hallelujah. 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 God, we love you and we honor you. That's what I'll be. You know it's I will be what you call me to be. I'll say yes. Lord, I agree. My your hands, sing it as a prayer to him. Everybody, lift your hands, sing it. I will be what you call me. I know the devil's telling you you can't right now, but I'm telling you, sing it by faith. I'll say yes. I'll say yes. Come on, sing it by faith. Lord, I agree my desire. look out over this crowd and I see so many miracles I see so many miracles I see people that were broken you don't have to look now but there's a man on the back row in a wheelchair his arms up he's praying they wanted us to pull the plug on him and just let him die but God raised him off of the bed being in a coma for eight weeks. Miracle after miracle of what the Holy Ghost wants to do. And here's what I feel the Lord telling me as we leave today. Some of you say, well, Brother Elder, I didn't get there. No, but you opened the door today. You open the door. And you can pray at home the way you prayed in this altar today. And you can pray in your car the way you prayed in this altar. I know it's not, you know, you, you have the synergy of brothers and sisters around you. That's why you need to come to church every opportunity you get, you get because that synergy is important. That's when we operate as the body of Christ. But I want to tell you, God will come into that car with you. He will come into that house with you. He will come into that job. Just slip in a bathroom somewhere. Shut the door and lock it. Begin to talk to God. Let this mind be in you. Let the Holy Ghost direct your steps. Let the Word of God direct your steps. Some of us spend way too much time. I was reading the other day that average American now is spending over eight hours a day on social media. That's a travesty. Praise God. Let's disconnect from that. Let's get back in the Holy Ghost. It's revival time in Pueblo, Colorado. How many of you are excited about what God is doing around here? Now listen. They've got good raps, wonderful stuff out here. It's for a good cause. It's for our young people to go to peak. Buy it. Eat it. Take it home. Buy two or three, eat them, give them to somebody. There's a lot of street people around here. They would love you to death. You just take them a, a wrap and some potato chips or something. Praise God. Let's support our young people. We love them. This afternoon, 2.30, Spanish outreach service right here. God's going to be moving in our Spanish service. Choir practice at 4.30 this evening. Church tonight, man, if you miss Sunday night, you have missed something special. God bless you, love one another, you are dismissed.